Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this quick shot is Heather. Hey Heather. Hey Becky. Um, so on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Ruthless Salvation by Jill Ramsar. This is book three in the Byrne Family series. We'll link the synopsis of this book in our on-the-shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com. Um, this is going to release within like 30 days of when the book came out. So it might be, it will keep it as spoiler free as we can. But I think there's a couple things we have to talk about that could be spoiler ish. So huh? if you're planning to read this, I would suggest you read the book first and then come back and listen to our quick shot. Yeah. And I want to know if people like think the same things or if they think different. Yeah. We, this is this is one that Heather and I would really love you to slide into our DMs and kind of let us know if you agree with us or our takes on it. Because I have some thoughts about this book. Yeah, I I do, too. Um, I really like the series. Like, that's not... I will continue to read the series and like the series. But this isn't my favorite of the yeah i think it has a little bit of a sophomore slump feel to it um so okay let's give you the stats it was released september 6 2023 tropes touch her and die vibes Mm -hmm. this is a protector romance um hidden identity mafia romance it takes place in new york city so big city feels this is a rescue romance like even just on its surface, Torin is rescuing Stormy without even mm-hmm. realizing it first. Um, there is a stalker involved, so danger. <laughs> mutual pining. Multiple stalkers. Multiple stalkers. Uh, mutual pining, and this is an absolute damsel in distress romance. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you listened to our female archetype... See, uh, episode that we did a couple weeks previous then you, and you want to know what we mean by damsel and stress go back and listen to that episode um, it was a really great episode I was really proud of that episode I have been really busy so I need to listen to it <laughs> it's okay so it's on my docket um, series this is the burn family series these are interconnected standalones I do think that you could read these on their own mm-hmm. yeah I think so she does enough world building within within each book that you wouldn't be lost to pick up here yeah and part of this book um runs concurrently with the previous book so that's something that she does there's a little overlap of time in the books i which is also is interesting i think and i do wonder if you read this book as a standalone if you would like it better Yeah, probably. Um, Okay, so this is dual first person narrative. Uh, 22% is when it pops. And it pops big time. So hard. (laughs) Although I've read like two or three books in a row lately that are all like in the storage room. Listen, shelves of bottles of alcohol do not sound that great. (laughs) I feel like they might be a little more flexible than we are. (laughs) Probably. And they're um, younger. I think they're younger. Absolutely, they are. Um, and there is no third act breakup in this book. That is, I have really been needing those. Like, I, yeah, okay. I don't need the drama. <laughs> we'll talk about that in an upcoming episode because I have, mm-hmm. Becky has big thoughts about that. So weird. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's weird you have big thoughts, Becky. I do, right? Like, because that never happens around here, ever. No, all new. No. New information. I never say anything about anything. Nope. <laughs> so reserved. <laughs> that is an adjective I would use to describe you. <laughs> Let's talk ruthless salvation. So our heroine mm-hmm. in this book, so before we, okay, let's start with the hero. We don't typically start with the hero, but let's start with the hero. Our hero's mm-hmm. name Fun. is Torin Byrne. He is a cousin to the main family that we've met so far. Yeah. And he plays like a large role in their business. Um, But you're not 100% sure like 
how he plays into the family. Like in the previous two books, we heard a lot about Torn, but not necessarily. We know he's a cousin, but we're not sure how he's a cousin. Yeah. In the first book, we really learn who the key players are, the uncles Mm -hmm. and all the brothers. And then now the grouping of cousins. And then, um, but we're not quite sure where Torn fits in. And come to find out, we learn that his father chose to left, leave the family mm-hmm. business. He was n- So Torn did not grow up with the mob feels. His dad went into the legitimate sides of business and mm-hmm. really divorced himself from the family narrative. Yeah, which is... And now Torin is, like, engrossed in it. Um, and... It was sort of like a self-preservation thing. I think one of the things that really she really highlighted really well was like some people may think that mafia is like very underbelly, but they do have a very strong sense of family and they don't turn their backs on their family unless you do them wrong. Yeah, and I really so previ- in the previous books, Torin was this enigma. But he was this pretty dynamic enigma in those stories. Like you just you started to see this, you know, smoldering connection between him and our heroine Stormy in the previous books. But you just didn't know and you didn't know what was holding him back or why he wasn't moving forward and why he came off kind of um, like assholey. Yeah. And but he definitely had walls up even within the family dynamic. Very standoffish. Yeah. yeah, he definitely keeps himself while he's a part of their business and plays like a role in keeping the club going. He really um, also separates himself and like makes it seem like he has like a personal life, Yeah, which we find out he has no personal life. Right. So he is the manager. One of the legit businesses that the Byrne family owns is this strip club and he manages it. Mm-hmm. And our heroine, Stormy, she is a server, not a stripper. She is a server mm-hmm. at the club. And she comes into the club and Torn is not who hires her. It's um, the manager of the club. And I can't think mm-hmm. of his name right now, but he's kind of a um, fatherly figure for Torin. Yeah. And I really liked his character. And... Side oh, note, great. Joe Ramsauer, if you're listening, I would really like him to get his own book. I believe he needs an HEA. Yeah. Yeah. Jill, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, Jill. So if you need some ideas, hit us up. Uh, he <laughs> needs his own book because his story and connection to Torrin and why he's working in the business in the role that he is, that was like one of the most impactful pieces of this story. It like was another piece To figure out why Torn was the way he was. Okay, so one of the things that I thought a lot about when I was reading this book was when we had interviewed Jill, or was it, she had said that she had a family member who was real close ties with the mafia, and so he would tell her stories. So then I'm like, ooh, is this like, you know, how, is this real, or did she like figment of her, you know what I mean? Yeah, he was a great character, and he plays Mm -hmm. kind of the protector father figure um, for Torin, but also for Stormy, and Stormy needs that. Oh, girl is so lost. Like, I don't think she realizes the person, like, she gives off the lost vibes. I don't, she hasn't picked up on that. No. So let's talk about Stormy. Um, She, in the previous two books, we get the impression that she's kind of sassy and fun and coming and doing her job, but she's got a backbone and she's, you know, puts this presence out into the world. But I don't feel like that's the character we got in this book. I think she wants everyone to believe that she's sassy and has a backbone and that might be the person she wanted to be, but that isn't who she yeah. I is think that, right now. 
And I think we have to remember that the previous two books, as you say that, the previous two books are the perception of those characters' point of view of who Stormy mm-hmm. is. So now we really got to see, you know, Jill built this really multi-layered character who has this big backstory um, and then is in the current present day. And her whole life is about self-preservation. Mm-hmm. Um, but so Jill writes this book. And this is something that I'm really struggling with right now. So in this book, it's written with a um, a dual a dual timeline. So we get a chapter in the present and then we get a chapter in the past that is Stormy's past and only Stormy's past. Right. And Thorn has a pretty significant past that brought him and Stormy sort of to the club together. But we don't get Torn. We don't get Torn's past. She does a really great job of within her writing showing us how why Torn is the way he is. But she has to tell us everything to explain why Stormy is who she is and the way she is. And every time the narrative, this dual narrative switched, this timeline switch, every time we'd go back into the past, I felt taken out of the intensity and the chemistry that we were just building between Stormy and Torrin. So I felt like every other chapter we were starting over. I, I like felt like I more understood why we were going back in time to figure out exactly why we were in the place we were at. I think I wished that it wasn't like we would get more chunks of the past and then more and then like a larger chunk of the present and then maybe a little bit more of the past. Does that make sense? See, and I almost wish she had written it in two parts. Mm. Pre-Stormy, pre-New York. So like a multi-chapter prologue part one. And then two thirds of the book be the present day and why we are where we are. Yeah, because which is probably why it's hard for her to decide how to write it because we're just two readers and we have different. Yeah, I just struggled with the way the timeline was. I just struggled with staying in the moment with their chemistry and them as a couple. Yeah, I think as we got probably closer to the climax or whatever, you know, um, it all like really came together, like really well. I do think, yeah, it did. It does come together. I do think that this is an excellent, absolute Excellent example of touch her and die vibes. Yeah. Yes. Um, he like, I don't have another word for go, but go psycho. I mean, that scene. So Torin, one of the things that Torin does outside of managing the club is he does underground, like UFC mixed martial arts fighting. Fighting. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where Stormy and one of the other dancers, and one of the dancers go to one of these underground fights and Torin is fighting and he sees wow. her in the crowd. And they share like a look and that's it. And then he mm-hmm. loses his fucking shit. He loses it. I was like, what is he doing? I'm like, well, right. this is hot. Wow. And she's sort of like, what are you doing? And um, yeah, there's some... Some of the stalking scenes, like when I say there's kind of two stalkers, Torin um, can't get her out of his mind, so he may follow her, and she knows it and leaves her windows open. <laughs> well, and that's that was kind of okay. So what... I liked that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It was this little like cat and mouse, like they're both so like. I don't know. Can't say anything to each other. It's so weird, but it was kind of funny too. But he's stalking her for months. Like, yeah. Under the skies of like, he's not stalking her. He keeps his distance from her. 
but she knows she's being followed, but she's not sure if it's her own paranoia because part of her deal is, and I don't want to go into specifics. Um, I will say, I didn't say this earlier. You're going to want to check content and trigger warnings on this book. If you choose to read this book, I can't remember if Jill has content warnings in the front of the book or not. If you want to read this book and you have triggers, please message Heather or I so we can let you know what the triggers on this book are. Um, If you have triggers, like, I mean, there's a couple in here that if you have this trigger, I would tell you not to read it. Yeah. So um, Stormy is legit running from her past. Like she is trying to do everything she can to evade her past. And she's been evading her past for like five years. Yeah. I mean, she is on, she's a girl on the run. And so part of the reason she, she's working at kind of shady establishments is she has to, because she can't, she's not on the up and up. Yeah. She isn't working. Stormy is not her real name. Nope. She's not working under her true identity because her true identity is going to lead to harm. Um, yeah, and then the worlds kind of collide. and yeah. So her past collides with her future, creating some really great action in a book. Yeah. Like, there was probably the last third of the book was high-impact action. Like, what I expect in Mafia. Like, yeah. it is not it gritty. Yeah. Dark. I was here for it. It was dark and it was great. And then I always love the trick. One of the things that I think a lot of mafia and dark romance authors do is they use pets as a way to show humanity within these really kind of dark Mm anti-hero type characters. And Jill Ramsauer does that in this book. Stormy owns a cat, Mm -hmm. uh, Bluebell, the boy Mm -hmm. cat. And... Um, Torin hates the cat, but he shows us his pieces of humanity in the way he cares and goes back for and, you know, brings the cat into the fold. Yeah. I really like how um, the whole Burn family, I think part of Torin's whole thing is he never truly felt like maybe he belonged to the Burn family. And by... Um, the climax part of how everyone kind of like just kind of rallied around him yeah it really showed him like I really am part of the family and I liked the resolution I liked Mm -hmm. how they defeated the bad guy um I thought it was really really well done none of it felt hokey or like "Hmm, what um it was just really great action it played out in my mind like an action movie um totally but it was it was it was fast paced too. I do feel like this was a very fast paced book. Yeah, I it was a pretty quick read for me. Um, I know Becky is not a fan of bonus epilogues, <laughs> so she never ever downloads them. Never. This girl is a bonus epilogue friend, and yes, this is a good one. Oh, it's a good bonus epilogue. We okay. see like pretty. A di- like a little bit distant future and you see torn and really kind of mushy light and like the toucher and you just love when their toucher and die guy is a little mushy yeah absolutely you like to see the heart under behind the solid you know anti-hero asshole he yeah is. like he's a real human yeah um Okay, so do you have a book you think we should review for a quick shot of romance? Send us an email to the bees at bookcaseandcoffee.com. We will add it to our TBR. We would really, really like some suggestions. So please send us because uh-huh. we're starting to be like, ooh, we should do this book. Oh, we've done that author a lot. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so we're looking for new authors, new ideas for quick shots. So send us those emails. Also, if you're enjoying this episode, please feel free to leave us a review. We'd like reviews. We do like our dear. Um, Until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. 
If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 